Welcome back to Always Almost There, a Goose podcast series on We Move Through Stormy Weather. My name is Sweet D. I'm Ryan. I'm Brian, a.k.a. B, a.k.a. Jive Goose. And I'm Neil. And I'm Kev. The five of us here today uh, to talk about the first three shows of Dripfield Summer Tour. And one of our own, uh, Mr. Neil here, is going to start us off and talk about his own experience attending the shows in person at Westville. Wow. Uh, yeah, man, it was it was a hell of a time. My brother and I went down to those shows and stayed at a, a sweet Airbnb, like right on Wooster Street, if I'm pronouncing that right, where all the good pizza places are, and uh, ate, a, ate a ton of pizza and saw a lot of goose and dodged a lot of rain. Um you know, night one, I think I dressed pretty inappropriately and wore like <laughs> boots Ooh, and a no, rain jacket. What, what, what kind uh, of underwear? Uh, are we talking here? Uh, yeah. And oh no, yeah, it was yeah, awful. It was awful. I, I was like, I was dressed like it was going to pour rain, and then it didn't really rain at all. And uh, so, like, I was just like sweating to death like the whole <laughs> entire show. But it was like, you know, it was a good time. It was a fun show. Saw a lot of people, which was like pretty awesome. Um, it's always good to kind of see a Goose Hometown show because a lot of familiar faces are there. A lot of people traveled for that show, so it was really How good. How was the and, vibe? Were people excited to be back? You know, like night one vibe was like weird. Like it was, it was like not many people like who were really into the music to kind of start off. It just seemed like, you know, it was just like a big Connecticut party. <laughs> like, so, which like contrasts like pretty strongly, I think with night two, which like folks were there for Goose and and they were ready to to be into the music. So it was like very different vibes, like each night. Night two was pretty great. For me, um, we didn't really have any rain, so that was super great. And then um, my high school buddy, who I, you know, been going to shows with since I was like 16 years old, came to his first goose show, and uh, his mind was blown. Uh, so that was pretty special. So yeah, overall, it's like a it's a pretty fun weekend. And then I, I was going to go to Boston Calling, but seeing how it's it's like just 15 minutes down the road for me, but. Uh, just didn't work out. So uh, yeah, man, it was it was a hell of a time. Amazing. What's the what? What's your favorite pizza? My favorite pizza is modern. Ooh, modern. That's yeah. It's 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 actually far away from where all where I was actually staying. I actually traveled to go to modern because I just like it so much. It's like a classic. I don't know if you're not from Connecticut, which is like where I grew up. This may be unfamiliar, but like it's like pretty common. Like you go into a place it has a bunch of booths, you drink beers like out of pitchers and you just see pizza and i think like the rest of them kind of i don't know it's just not the same vibe a modern just reminds me of the place that was in my hometown so all right uh i love it and i go i went there last year and yeah i went this year from pizza right, well, reviews to show sh- reviews yeah man i got it all uh crazy <laughs> Well, New Haven. I mean, it, obviously, a lot of people do do claim it uh, the the capital of pizza. So, hey, you got a lot out there that I'm sure will be coming for that modern call. Now. Yeah, no, it's it's delicious. It's it, it, and like you have to have it to understand why it's good. I don't know. Neil Yo, a beat. Yeah, a beat. He, the, it's some, a beat. Some call him right? the Jive Goose of the East. Uh, <laughs> I've got Rex, uh, the Jive, the Jive Yelp uh, of the East. Who says that? We said. Uh, <laughs> no do. one, literally Some. no one ever. I just did, so that that makes it. Let, let let's start talking about these shows. Um, first set of the first night, May twenty seventh, at Westville, Atlas, Flowdown, Doctor Darkness, Pancakes, Seekers on the Ridge, Parts One and Two, and Hot Tea. Before we dive into the set, I do want to point out Peter's got a new synth in his rig, uh, the Korg Mono Poly. Uh, very excited to see him expanding more information on his keyboard rig check out ryanstorm.substack.com got a full video breakdown with him from this past march as well as details on everything in it uh, but they come rig rundown shout out rig rig rundown <laughs> shout out um so they come out of the gate uh you know absolutely blazing with this atlas i was very surprised to see it jammed out in the manner that it was. And I really, you know, we haven't seen a lot of chatter about it since the run, which surprises me, but this is really good. You know, we haven't seen a lot of really extended jams out of covers this year. You know, the way it is got played once and had a great jam, but you know, I, I feel like, I feel like we haven't had many since then. Um, I, I could be wrong, but th- this was a really, really nice surprise. Great guitar work from Rick and Peter. Um, just really enjoyable jam. I think sneaky shout for maybe, 
jam of the weekend for some. Definitely. But we'll continue to discuss. Anyone else want to talk about the Atlas? Well, shoot, I'll, I'll jump yeah. in. Uh, why not? Uh, <laughs> I mean, the, the Atlas is spectacular. It is one of the best jams of the weekend, if not the best jam of the weekend. I think a lot of us were surprised. I, I think I was surprised in the moment that this is like how they came out of the gate. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know, it was like almost disorienting. It was like, are they really going this hard to to start the show? And they certainly were. The Bliss Jam that they kind of land on in this atlas is absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, I mean, like I'm a sucker for the, the Goose Bliss Jam and they absolutely crushed it. It was like, you know, moderately, like the light was there, the, the sun was out to some degree. Um, it was light out and like, it was kind of perfect for the moment. You know, that's a good sun. Go ahead. sunset vibe. No, just a good sunset mm-hmm. vibe on it. I agree. Yeah. Nice sort of unsettling, right? Though I'd, I'd be curious, like I could almost sense and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Neil, from the stream, like almost a little surprising of a call, a little slow. Like, yes, the jam got to a great place. I almost look at these, the way that this set list is, why not f- flow down first, right? That sort of would have gotten the crowd maybe a little bit more there. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like it was kind of a slower start? Just wondering. Yeah, I mean, I mean. And then it got great, obviously. Yeah, so like maybe that's why they put the flow down where they did. Um, I don't know. Um you know, because like it's funny because Atlas and Floatdown are kind of two like pretty historic common openers, right? I think if you want to like add up like pretty common openers, like Floatdown would be one time to flee Atlas, not for a very long time, but there was a time where they would open with it a bunch. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. Like probably, I didn't look at a set list from that night, or maybe I did, and I just don't remember. But. Maybe that was their thought, like, you know, kind of just get out there and, and space it out and then, like, get folks dancing, which kind of makes sense because, right, they just went right to Dr. Darkness after that. So, like, you're kind of, you know, speeding it up, slowing it down, like, a little bit. Yeah, and, and it's interesting you mentioned, you know, opening, you know, not going for something that they generally open with more nowadays, like Flea. And I think this Atlas Jam really touched on a lot of themes that you see in a Time to Flee Jam. And I was listening to it earlier today, and I kept thinking yeah. to myself, like, I'm, I'm waiting for them to drop into the Flea ending. And so I think that's a really, it's a really cool vibe, you know, also hearing that style of jam with Peter on guitar instead of keys, which he plays in Flea. Yeah, you know, he does I, some, I like, pretty cool, cool soloing in that. Um, that was, like, mm-hmm. one of the, the first things I wrote in my notes about that show, was I really liked his guitar work. Um, and then, you know, he did the... Uh, he did like that kind of strat tone thing that I love. And he did it actually a bunch over the course of this weekend where like, you know, it almost, it almost sounds like a um, smooth criminal. Like he's got that like tone, like just yeah. dialed in perfectly to that sound. Yeah. The it's, it, that's the flea. I just was captivated with the Ryan's comment about flea. I got a note here too. Yeah. Like 12 minute mark. They kind of um, find this great space. Den- just gently settles beautifully, you know, Gentle bed, gentle bed of piano, of, uh, bed. sonic waves, <laughs> yeah, gentle beds. But it, but it did. It was literally like they just took another jam out of it. It's not. I'm not saying they repackaged a flea jam, but f- sort of settled in those spaces of a the typical sunset sort of sets we've seen from them lately. Whether it's Suwani with the flea, and you know, yeah, a lot of parallels. It's a good point. Yeah, and then so like moving on, like the pancakes was pretty good. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I like the the jam that they kind of landed on um, right at about like the 1230 mark. Rick introduces kind of this theme that's like reminiscent of sneaking Sally through the alley, but not quite. I, I yeah. think a bunch of people around me kind of heard it where they kind of do the like the dun dun and not the dun dun dun, dun part. I don't know. Just a, um, you know, just a two note descending riff. Yeah, it's like a two note descending riff. Um, and, and that was pretty cool. And then it seemed like they really loved the riff and then nobody kind of did anything with it. So they just ended the song, uh, yeah, kinda, which is kind of a bummer because I, I thought that could have ended up somewhere really, really cool. And then, you know, kind of in keeping with this like sine wave of fast, slow, fast, slow uh, on this set, you know, seekers one and two, like, you know, seekers to seekers. It's, it's always, it's always Solid. great to see. Yep. Yeah. And then, you know, kind of ended on a high note with, with hot tea, which was, you know, the first of two teas on the weekend and I don't know, I, I might've liked the second one better, but uh, this <laughs> tea and I, I'll explain why later. That's so a, I, the, I know that's a controversial statement, but yeah. The thing about this tea for me is, you know, I think it's another one you, you know, you mentioned in the pancakes, they come upon this riff and then nobody really, you know, took it to the next level there. And I think in this tea, you know, 
they get into this cool groove and then they just kind of sit in the cool groove and don't really change anything about it for a while. And so it, you know, it tends to be, or fall a little bit flat. And I I think, you know, they've really been trying, uh, they've been trying really hard with hot tea this year, I think. And, you know, even going back to like late last year, um, I think there's a conscious effort to try to extend it in, you know, in cool ways. And I think more often than not, it ends up being kind of predictable. You know, like when you hear that opening riff, it's like, okay, we're going to get a very solid groove, but it's not really anything unexpected. So, you know, I, I think we're definitely going to talk a little bit later about songs that have been kind of coming in and out of the rotation and then picking what we're not expecting. And so I think, you know, T has kind of remained in this like two to four show rotation or so. And so, it, you know, it's interesting to look at, you know, how that continues to be very common where other formerly frequently played originals have kind of fallen off a little bit. Brian, you've been very quiet. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hey, Hey guys. Hi. Uh, Hi. Um, yeah, just to, I, yeah, I'll, I'll add just a few things to this first set and then we can move on. Uh, I, I am a big fan of this Atlas. I thought it was possibly the best jam of the night or at least my favorite. And, and D, I, I did want to say too, yeah, I, you know, you hear those jams sometimes where it gets that flea kind of feel. And it's funny because for me, it's like when I'm listening, I'm, you're almost waiting for, for them to drop into the bow, 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 bow. You know what I mean? Just that, 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 that flea refrain coming out of the jams. Um, and, and I definitely heard that here and Neil, the, the Sally, you know, kind of, kind of vibes on the pancakes. I totally heard that. I was right there with you. Um, and that was really cool. Uh, definitely, definitely could have seen, uh, that turn into something really cool. If they had have stuck with it. And then as far as the tea, yeah, give me the 10 minute, just fire tea. Uh, yeah. I think, I think mm-hmm. that's probably what, what, what I, what I prefer now. And, and the only other thing about tea that's kind of funny. So, so, I mean, you know, it is, it's at eight plays, which is, you know, right there with a uh, quite a few other songs at, at, at eight plays as kind of as, as the most played songs so far this year. But I always think back to last summer, uh, Kev, when when we did the the six shows, the 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 two in Wisconsin, the two in Montana, and then the two in Denver, and they played T it at each in each, each city. run, yeah, yeah, which was which was really weird because that there, and there might there might have only been. I'd have to look back. I don't think there were many repeats yeah. um, at all. They played drive yeah, on a two show three gap, plays. which is interesting. But yeah, yeah. So 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 anyway, yeah. I uh, yeah. We'll talk about T again. We, we, you know, when we talk about Boston Calling, but but yeah. I I, I feel like I don't I don't want to not want to see T. You know what I mean? That makes me feel sad inside. <laughs> but but I want to. But I, yeah. And, and dude, encore that shit. You know what I mean? Give me a ten minute. You know, our nine-minute T encore mm-hmm. I, that'll send the crowd home, quick, home happy. Yeah, quick opener too. I like what um, and they did it yeah. at uh, um, uh, four twenty, right? And they, they opened with the yeah. T yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, 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 and a little shorter. I agree. Yeah, I made a comment, and I was curious if you guys heard it too. Like, so I was looking at the written set list, and they notated they wanted to go flow down in to Doctor Darkness. I feel this was the yeah. first time that song missed kind of for me. It was it, it started out of sort of an empty space which didn't really work for it. Just felt kind of awkward. So hopefully we don't see that trend continue. I can see they tried to note it, maybe it just didn't work out coming out of the flow. But just to comment, Yeah, I, I think Doctor Darkness Dee, sans darkness. Uh, yeah, I, I think it really benefits from that, you know, one or two minutes of like angry space jam that they've done the majority of times that it's mm-hmm. been played. Uh, this year, I think, yeah, that sets the vibe for Dr. Darkness. You know, you're able to like, you know, you get into the mood, but yeah, I, I agree D that it, it felt kind of awkward coming out of a more hard stop. And then just, but uh, just Kev, one more yeah. comment uh, before we move into set two for uh, this first show at Westville, always almost there wants to shout out kindness over muscular dystrophy, uh, yes. the organization that uh, goose partnered with over these two shows uh, to donate some merch sales uh, to help support the organization itself. Uh, and they shouted out Connor, uh, Connor Curran dedicated that hot tea uh, to him and his family. 
Uh, and they have another friend, Will Kuhn, that's going to be there in Indianapolis that is also afflicted with muscular dystrophy. So thanks to Goose for, for everything they nice. do to, to support that great cause. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good, good call out. Hell yeah. Yeah, hopefully more of that too. It's uh, it's nice to see, obviously there. And just like we did a uh, bingo tour, right? Bingo tour, they did the um, the uh, kids uh, musics sort of, I believe they they donated some of that yes. funds too. So that's cool to see that they're working on it that. It is yeah. very nice. Let's move on to the second set. Very nice. All right, second set. So second set, we had Madavon, the, the most controversial song ever played. Uh, <laughs> just and then <laughs> uh, Creatures into kind of the end of pancakes that we didn't pancakes get in the first reprise? set. We're not calling no. it a reprise. <laughs> <laughs> and then Wisteria Lane uh, and then uh, SOS Closer. And, you know, like I'm going to preface this because like, I think like a bunch of people listening have heard us talk about Madavon a lot. I don't think Madavon was, was the highlight of the night necessarily, but I, I think there is a section, a couple sections that were of note. There was like kind of at the 11 minute mark, they, kind of Peter did this kind of chugging like metal riffage uh, that was pretty neat, but like nothing really to write home about. And then, you know, the last six minutes I thought, and I've taken some heat for this <laughs> <laughs> was like, you know, it was a really nice kind of like blissy yet high energy jam. Um, and there was a lot of emotion involved. Mm-hmm. Some people uh, lack emotion, so they might not have felt that way, but um, hey, hey, don't don't be mean to Brian. He, he can't <laughs> so control his lack of emotion. So uh, kind of I have a heart of stone. <laughs> Hearts of stone. Objective analysis only. <laughs> so I enjoyed that in the moment. Uh, like I have to say, like attendance bias, bias is strong on that one. I think a lot of people who were there really loved how that Madavon ended, and then like pausing on Madavon and like not like talking about the jam itself, but like Madavon is a set to opener. Like hell yeah, yeah. Like, Love it wow. in that slot. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That's and on paper, paper the same. Yeah, and like you know, way to come out the gate. Um, that it's an amazing, amazing uh, way to kind of jump out. And then creatures was like great. You know, it's 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 creatures. And Peter did some really awesome vintage vibe work in that creatures. And the Korg, uh, man, mm-hmm. the Korg really, really in these first two. You know, he yeah. was he was on it a little bit on guitar, uh, or, or while he was playing guitar in Madavan. Um, and you know, I think the loops that he was triggering there different to the Nord synth that he has, mm-hmm. uh, that he has, uh, oh, yeah. he has been his only in the past. The core kind of produces a sharper sound, I think. So it, it gives a very different, uh, feel to the jam and what he's using it. in. And I think it really, really accentuated, uh, some of the builds in both of these jams and just, you know, the overall groove, especially, you know, he's been utilizing that, that glide function, which is the siren sound where it glides from mm. one note to the other. And he was doing a lot of that. And I, yeah. I, I, and like, I, I think great. this creatures was the first taste of like this psychedelic vibe that mm-hmm. like I got when I was there. Um, and I got it much more in night two, but this was like kind of the first taste of that in the show where like Peter's like, you know, kind of doing stuff with the chord and then doing other stuff as well. Like sometimes he's playing guitar, sometimes he's like, playing piano. And so that happens in this creatures jam where he kind of, is doing some like synth loops and then starts playing the piano. And to me, it sounds a lot like the kind of, for lack of a, a better way to describe it, kind of like the, the roses are free ish, like piano jam and the pine Creek, all I need. Um, so he introduces like that kind of like the dun, 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 on the piano. And that kind of leads into this really awesome return to the ending of pancakes. I want to preface this by saying this is not Wolf a Wolfman's Brother Jam. Wolf cakes. That is just the chord progression for Pancakes, which also oh. happens to be the chord progression for Wolfman's Brother. Oh. So them transitioning into the ending of Pancakes is not a Wolfman's Jam. It is returning to the ending of Pancakes. CCP. Right. And then, so, you know, that was awesome. I like I, That was one of the more kind of like exciting things, like being at the show. I, I think I kind of was doing some jumping and you know, throwing my hands up in the air for that one. And then were you waving them? Like you just don't care. Uh, I was. <laughs> and so oh, God. I think by this point I was like probably pretty drunk. Um, so in any case, there was Wisteria, which like, I think when they started playing Wisteria kind of after the psychedelic spaces that creatures went to, we were like, Oh man, we're really in for it now. And that like, turns out didn't happen. It got pretty weird and like pretty psychedelic. There was a whole lot more synth in that one. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and then, you know, they finished with SOS and like that brought the house down. Like people were, it's just like, it totally, it, it grabbed everybody and brought them in. And, um, you know, I, we were talking kind of before, like in group chat about like Goose's emphasis on executing songs and based on Rick's interview with a Cleveland, I think, newspaper ahead mm-hmm. of Legend Mike of Valley. McMahon. Mike McMahon. Yeah. And thank you, Mike. It, yeah. And, and this was like a really good example of them going out there and just like perfectly executing one of their songs and just absolutely banging it. Like it's not, it's not a song that you want to go and listen to for the jams, but like it, it killed. And like um, my brother left the show saying like, that was my favorite part of the show um, and not for the jams, but just for like the vibe uh, in that tune. Yeah. He said the SOS. Yeah. The SOS. Yep. Yeah. It's a ripping song live. Yeah. It is. I, it, it I have a different opinion of it after seeing it live. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And, and it's like one of those things I think you got to be there for to, to get the, the, the real vibe. But uh, And then, you know, they ended the show with Rockdale. And like Rockdale as an encore is incredible. Uh, like, Honest question, is there a bad place for Rockdale? No. no. I mean, you can play it anywhere. Out of Spirit of the Dark Horse. Right. In New Orleans. <laughs> 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 That's the only one. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean that that's that's set two there. Uh, hell of a set two on paper. I still think it's like a pretty good set two. Very uh, solid. Like they didn't knock our socks off with jams, but like if you're talking about executing songs and ex- executing them well, um, I, I think that's what happened in that show. Yeah, and I, I think yeah. I want to echo your sentiment on SOS. I mean, it kills live, and I think it works really, really well as a second set closer. You know, just euphoric peak after euphoric peak would love to see it pop up in this slot more often yeah I'll, let me jump in neil because i know you and i were having a lot of fun with this matt of M. yeah and uh yeah. a little bit we all were we all were let's not be <laughs> fun was had so so yeah i mean first of all you said it i mean second set matt of opener you know you everybody's gonna feel that and and it is a it this look first of all every matt of is awesome. You know, I, I think almost, almost all fans can agree on that. Um, and I thought that the, I, I liked the, the, the heavy metal, you know, riffage, uh, you know, as you called it, that, that was definitely, that was definitely cool and kind of, kind of set, set a nice, um, you know, different kind of texture or layer there that, that we that we don't usually hear. And it is a really strong ending. Uh, I just think, you know, when I'm, when I am looking at things and I'm, and I'm, you know, ranking them or whatever, which, you know, maybe that's dumb anyway, but you know, I, I, I kind of feel like there are some other really great Mandavans uh, from, from this year, even that I really like, I, I really like bend. Mm-hmm. Um, I think bend gets into some, yep. some really kind of spacey, you know, places and, you know, look for some people that's meandering and for other people it's, uh, Oh, it's patience. And, organic slow build <laughs> whatever it is you know what i mean so it all comes down to personal preferences is the point right uh i also really liked royal look by the way i'll i'll, I'll throw that out there as well um, that one was fun but no that it did this had that this mad event has a strong ending uh you know no doubt about it and you guys laughed at me too i thought i feel a little a little of that plus 15 minute jam vibe from bingo tour and it's just that ascending just that that kind of ascending progression that they do kind of up i think it's around like 16 or 16 and a half minutes they start that really cool uh of the mad event that is they start that really cool kind of ascending progression that really kind of sets the the stage for that for that for that that build out b is that is that that um is are you talking about the section of the 15 minute post synth jam out of the travelers yeah, yeah, the plus fifteen minute jam out of Travelers, and it's the very end of it. It's the the very the end, very of it end. When yep, it, yeah. where Rick takes off. Yeah, because uh, yep. yep. it cool. was killing me when I was listening to that Matt Van. That you know, I was trying to place it, and that might not be that they, they might do that in other places as well. But I, I was, I was, I, I was getting deja vu mm-hmm. every time when I was listening to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, good creatures like the the cool sounds that that Peter was making. It, it was a it, it was a really cool transition, you know. I mean, creatures just took a, a hard right turn at some point. I don't know what we I don't have a timestamp, but um, and I think we're all like, oh, wow, this is interesting. You know what, what what's happening here? And 
you know, about the wolf, about the wolf man's, you know, stuff, uh, all that talk and, you know, wolf cakes and all this stuff. Yes. So it's, and, and, and Ryan can speak to the, you know, to the music theory and, and the exact chord progression. It's obviously a very similar progression. It's the exact same to progression. Wolfman's brother. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, but, but what happens is normally in pancakes, it, it's a higher tempo than, than the, the, what we're used to today with a, with a funky, you know, Wolfman's jam. But so what was interesting about this one, and I think why so many people were calling it out is because they, it was so low tempo coming out of that creature's jam mm-hmm. when they first went into the, to the, when the, when they finally transitioned over into the pancakes, you know, slash Wolfman's progression, they were at a really nice, slow, funky tempo of cakes. And they did ride. I felt like they rode that out. I mean, de- definitely longer than normal, but yeah, they rode that out for a few minutes and, and I definitely was getting heavy Wolfman's vibes for sure. Um, really cool way to, to I, I thought, to, to refrain back and, and, and finish it off. I thought that was really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, and then just real quickly, I'll wrap up my thoughts. Yeah. The wisteria, you know, D you were, you know, everyone was talking about the, you know, the, the, the article that just came out and, you know, Rick talking about, you know, we don't want to just jam for the sake of jamming. And, and I'm, I'm wildly paraphrasing, I think, but, but kind of basically saying like, look, you know, we, we like the idea of maybe having these well-executed tight sets, you know, and yeah. when, when, when inspiration strikes, you know, then we're, 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 yeah, we're happy to, we're happy to kick down these, these long jams, uh, which is really cool. So, so, you know, sometimes like with this wisteria, I think it's really easy to be like, well, you know, wisteria, it's 14 minutes, you know, and it didn't really develop or whatever, whatever, but you know, I mean, Hey, it's, it's still a really cool song. It was a cool small jam. Um, so micro jam, you know, it's you just, yeah, it's just not gonna, it's just not gonna, we, we talk about this all the time, you know, not, not every banger or whatever is going to, is going to go deep every time. Mm-hmm. And, and, but still a great song. And you said it, this set, it's not just on paper. Yeah. It looks great on paper, but it's also, this is a, this is a really good set. You know, I had a hard time kind of figuring out which set two I like better. Actually. I, I think both of these set twos are really, really strong. Yep. SOS great closer. And I agree with everything you said about Rockdale. Yeah. Play that shit anywhere, anytime <laughs> yeah. worked out oh, yeah. great encore. Yeah. Well, I mean, plus you talk, we talk about Wisteria, right? We are saying we want a 10 minute tea. We can, and there's a couple songs uh, the next night we're about to talk to talk about efficient. They can be 12 to 14 minutes. One of our favorite jams, at least consensus wise, we've spoken of is the San Francisco Wisteria. It's three and a half minutes longer than this one, mm-hmm. right? You know, and it, it, yeah. it, I think we can state it. it doesn't have to be 25 minutes long for sure. But so, let me tell you, you know, it's good to a 24 minute Wisteria, like the one in DC. That's mm. the, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm> just, <laughs> I right. do. Oh, only other item I wanted to state, uh, we saw the written set list probably would have been even cooler, especially because of the ballad, Madhavan Creatures. Then it was supposed to be Rockdale, Wisteria. They took out Your Ocean and an SOS closer still, and we would have gotten an escape encore. Come and on. And we didn't get the ocean oh, in any subsequent shows. I, I know. They I, I love the set as played. Kev, what do you got on, on set two? Yeah, uh... Actually, what I was going to do is transition us on uh, Beautiful. T- to night, night two here, right? Beautiful. Uh, before we do that real quick, though, I want to give Ryan a shout out here. Oh. Uh, he got to write up a little review in Jam Base for oh. 6 1 Charleston. Uh, so give that a read. But moving on here to night two at that, Westville. That, that, in case you're wondering, that's, that's for a different band. Um, it is for a different band. I appreciate the shout out. It's another animal yes. band. Uh, under the umbrella. Kind, kind of off topic, really. But yeah. under the umbrella of the Young Ryan Media Conglomeration. This is true. Uh, well, now, now that you've Canadian brought it up, by music. the time this is out, I will have done a second one for uh, the Saturday Deer Woo! Creek show. So This uh, guy is going places. Check out those recaps. <laughs> let's uh, let's move on to the second up. night. <laughs> yeah, night two, set one. Uh, very energetic drive opener. Uh, and then we are experiencing a whole bunch of down tempo songs here: California Magic, Old Man's Boat, Turn Clouds into Honey Bee, and then they leave us with some energy at the end of that set with Empress of Organos. Yeah, you know, for me, this is a, this is a, a good set. You know, I think you mentioned the down tempo songs. You know, Drive, great opener. You know, not quite on the level as the last time they opened with it in Philly, but still really, really good. Fifteen and a half minutes as they do with drive, you know, they really 
execute that jam well. Um, California Magic is a great first set song. You know, again, Neil talked about yesterday, uh, yesterday in the previous show about the vibe with the the sun going down, still being partial daylight. I think California Magic uh, works in that slot. But then, you know, following it up with Old Man's Boat, Turn Clouds, and Honeybee, which are all more down tempo songs. You know, you start to see a little bit of a, you know. A, a more again a more down tempo vibe i guess um but not really what you may be looking for in a whole set still really good uh you know and there's no such thing as a bad old man's boat jam i absolutely love that groove uh you know peter did some nice synth action in there if i remember correctly and then this empress set closer is really unique because it's the first time we've seen peter uh use his guitar during the jam which he did at the beginning um, I'd love to see that happen more. You know, we in, in the last couple of years, especially, we've seen a lot of songs where Peter was traditionally on guitar, either for the song part in the case of Western Sun or just in the jams that he now plays on keyboards more frequently. So something like Creatures, um, which used to be a guitar jam song, is now predominantly keyboards. So I think it would be really cool to see more go the other way. Songs that he normally takes on keys, maybe he jumps on guitar for a little while. You know, I think there was some really cool uh, stuff going on with him uh, at the beginning of this Empress Jam. Um, and I would love to see that happen again in a more expanded capacity. Yeah, I mean, I like the drive opener, obviously. I mean, I like I like that song so much. And yeah, just a good, you know, a good kind of mid-length, you know, drive, get, get the party started. Um, I'm a huge, I, you know, I've said this many times. I'm a huge California Magic fan. I think it's, I, I mean, out of the Father John Misty covers, I'd say this is my favorite. <laughs> oh, um, man. <laughs> yes, thank you. Seriously. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, look, you know, I mean, it's just Magic Boat, Clouds, Honeybee. I, I don't dislike any of these songs. I just felt like there there needed to be, a, we needed a little more pep. And I, I guess, Neil, I'd ask you that, like in the venue, I mean, did, did it suck the energy out a little bit or did you feel like live at the venue, set, this set rolled along nicely and had energy? Well, I'll say this. The smoking section was full at Westville for like a good <laughs> chunk of the set. And, uh, you know, I, I think folks came to party night two and like that party just was not happening in this first set. Uh, you know, Empress kind of like brought us all back. But like, if you think about like California Magic and then Old Man's Boat, which I think in terms of Old Man's Boat, that was probably like the most kind of straight ahead version of Old Man's Boat you're ever going to get. Has been. Yeah. yeah it was. Um, and then like Turn Clouds was like, was pretty good and like, you know, had some energy to it. But then they like kind of went back down again to like Honey Bee. Shout out to Kirsten Wintergreen, uh, Quality News. Oh, yes. yeah. Right. Quality News 3. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's after that Quality Juice News. interview. <laughs> Uh, he was juicing on that was incredible so like to answer your question jive like that first set like i I think it a lot of people checked out in that first set and i'm not gonna lie like i I made some trips to some different places uh during that first set like merch um i did well yeah that was like (laughs) night two uh sorry kev uh (laughs) did you go back to your car i did not go back to my car Um, are you doing drugs uh i was not doing drugs (laughs) But uh, yeah, man, it, like vibe was was not high in that set. Like, I, I think unlike there, Neil, there were a lot of people on the floor like who just like weren't like into the music. So I actually moved up into the stands uh, for Empress, and I'm glad that I did. That Empress kind of did bring folks back in. You know, there was like a, a pretty hilarious part in that Empress. Oh yeah, where like you know Peter's like out there like on his guitar when he normally wouldn't be on his guitar. Like Ryan was saying. And then Rick kind of does the like, like the like thing that he does in Empress to like kind of like kick back into the jam where like normally Peter's on the keys and Peter like, and you guys can probably speak to this better because you saw it on the stream. Yeah. Like just about shit his pants. (laughs) He like jumped and ran back to the keys, uh, at least from like where I was sitting. And like we were, we were, we were laughing hysterically during that part. And you know, I, I think that moment is is pretty cool. Like they're out there and they're having fun with the music. Like it's not a business to them. Like they're out there, you know, fucking time. with each other. Really, yeah. you know. Um, and I, I think that's like an amazing thing. And it's one of the reasons why I love this band. Like shit's still fresh to them, and like they just want to 
like mess around with each other, right? Like it doesn't have to be like, the, you know, a business, I guess. Uh, so I, I enjoyed that part. And then Peter being out there on guitar during Empress for a big chunk of it. Again, there was like that smooth criminal kind of guitar vibe thing, which like, I just eat that up. Um, it's incredible. We got an MJ fan here. Uh, yeah, man. So, you know, like, uh, it's not a bad way to end the set, but like, yeah, no, to answer your question, like the, the air came out of the tires in that set there. There's no way to, there are no two ways about it for sure. That's okay. We got to call him like we see him, right? Yep. Um, shall we move into set two? Did anyone have any other? I thought the Empress did have, um, I mentioned it to you guys earlier, but if anybody wants, um, another example of the new synth, um, and, and sort of that higher screech, like Ryan spoke to right as, they leave the the jam kind of um twelve to twelve and a half twelve thirty to like thirteen minutes. Um, big release from Peter. It's pretty cool. It really like caught my ear when I was re listening, and uh, it just is an example of some of the different sounds. And I think highlighted cooler spaces because they're trying to do stuff something different with songs as we've seen. So actually, it was a good good I, use. No, I'm glad you mentioned that. I I don't know if it was at twelve minutes or if it was before that, but did you guys catch that tease? Nope. Okay. It was actually about. It was actually at about three minutes. It was. Dif- it was a divided sky pause too. So oh, oh, hey. I think they did it the next night too, didn't they? They also may have. Yes. Yeah, right, it, you know what? It, yeah, it, I love when it, they it do that. It's a good. And then fish closed the set with it last night. Coincidence? I don't I think, think so. No. No. Yeah. No, definitely not. Well, I'll say one last thing about yeah. this set. Go goose. Go goose. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, which is like. Uh, if they're going to play Old Man's Boat, like commit to that 2020, 2021 jam, like just do it like and, and jam the shit out of it. Like, yeah. um, it, it's such it, a it's nice great jam. It's, it's so good. Yeah. yeah. It, it, like it's an amazing jam. jam. And, and yeah. like, I feel like they could have gone a little bit harder on that one. And it may have changed the set a little bit. It may have changed the vibe. in the Just set throw the 10 minutes from Turn Clouds into Boat. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, yep, for sure. 23 minute boat in the middle of the first set. I would not complain. That's what it was almost missing too. Yeah. The first set like, both yeah, nights were kind of missing like the bigger. Expl- and like we said, maybe that's, there wasn't the space for it. I could see it, but I would I say know. the first night, you know, we, we had the Atlas and that was a really, really great. Yep. Jam. But yeah. yes, I, I agree. I agree. Second set. Second set. Beat. Second set. Okay. So they came out and opened with <laughs> straight burden. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry. Red bird. <laughs> It's a lifestyle. When it's time, we got a. When it's time. (laughs) When it's time. I'm not doing it. Uh, Well, yeah, no, no, nobody do the Jeff part. Don't do the Jeff part. (laughs) Oh, right, because we couldn't hear it. Yeah. Um, Okay, and we got the we had the red bird, we had the butter rum, we had the echo of a rose, segueing nicely into the mist, Mm -hmm. into into the mist. Finish, that's the man. that's the second and time we done and then we had drip field to close the set and drip field to encore drip drip with the drip loop field drip drip drop. drip drip drip, drop. drip loop non-core field yeah field solid exactly so th- this is a good red bird eyes of the red bird another i mean look eyes of the yeah, Riva bird you're gonna Hey, they, they weren't messing around with their set two openers um, or set twos in general for that matter. But uh, no. yeah, Redbird opener, it's great. I would not have, uh, I, you know, it would have been interesting when I, when we were, when we were wondering, you know, when the, uh, you know, a photo of the, of the written list might come out, you know, were we going to see into cross-eyed and, and then it didn't get played and, and maybe they, they audibled to rum. Right. Mm-hmm. No, we didn't. We didn't see that, obviously. But I, I, I think uh, that would have been that would have been bad. CCP. It's like when Ke- it's, so. It's like when Kevin and I saw the uh, the Cervantes show, and they encored with hot, 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 uh, hot, hot, hot. <laughs> but Echo of a Rose was the written encore. I thought it was Jive Lee. Ooh, I thought it was Jive Lee. <laughs> I, I think it was Jive, Jive Lee. Lee on the playlist. They were going to play it. Echo, right? But then they're not, not, not. Oh. <laughs> They're not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Shoot. That's what happened. Yeah. That's that's hey, real. That's uh, what happened. I've, facts. I've never le- I've never left during the encore though. <laughs> you were there. So, you were singing to hot 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 B. Were you singing along? I, you know, I got yeah, I got in the fucking so, conga line, man. <laughs> 
Definitely at Cervantes of all places. There was one. I guarantee it. Oh, dude, <laughs> Colorado man. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so so yeah, yeah. I thought I thought we had a really big. Um, you know, the thing about the eyes and the rebun stuff. You know, the the cro- the, the pre cross eyed jam that they do, and, and and I don't know is. You know, tra- you know, traditionally, I think I think eyes is is the you know the E major seven, and yep. the uh, the Reba jam is the E flat major seven, right? This is true. And so, so I, I don't actually know what they do, what you know, what what key they're doing their normal pre cross eye jam in, but that's what this felt like to me. I mean, it, I, I was waiting. I mean, I I'll, I'll I'll be honest with you. I mean, I had into cross eyed and painless typed up. On and, Twitter and ready to hit send. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I I, I, I wasn't going like to bring it up, but you sure. know, now that you're talking about Twitter, like I'm oh, glad you just hit send on it because oh. there there were some other there were some oh man, so, uh, there's an accounting geez. happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> Live we'll see, on the oh, we've already no, we're on the next night. We've already moved on to the next <laughs> night. <laughs> Receipt, I have the receipts. <laughs> oh, I yeah, I have some receipts too from that night. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've all got receipts. So oh, man. I should have Good learned man. a lot. Hey, hey, look, shame on me! Shame on okay. shame on me for not learning my lesson in DC to <laughs> to not listen to any yeah, fucking guys. You, shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you should not. The blame After, train rolling through. I'm I'm never gonna. I'm you know what? I'm never gonna forgive myself for calling Liza Jane as Atlas, especially because they sound checked Liza Jane a couple hours before. <laughs> like it was still not wrong. My finest moment. Still yeah. Wrong. Well, I'm also up in the mountains, and so the stream Holy moly. doesn't get to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it. the, it's the mountain internet. <laughs> As, so you know what I mean. So <laughs> when you guys when you guys are texting me, dripping in all caps, I'm thinking, oh shit, they're they're like a minute ahead of me on the stream. No, it's just drip <laughs> vibes, man. <laughs> nobody nobody texted drip field. No, we did. We thought so it anyway. was dri- any, anyway. Drip vibes. Yes. Anyway, this is a, this anyway, is a really good so, second set. Keep talking about it. So anyway, so yes, yeah, so so great Redbird. Um, yeah, I, I really like that jam. Goose. And Goose uh, yeah. and so um, and, and and you know it's uh, you know when we look at all, all the strong Redbirds, all of you know I don't know where, where where this one ranks, but you know I think what what, what I was thinking was I'll take a a jam like that. Just, uh, you know, even if it is playing off of, you know, another jam or, you know, Reba or pre-cross-side or whatever it is. You know, I mean, I'll take that. That was a beautiful jam. I mean, it was, it was really, really good. Rum was a little bit of a surprise. Um, Turbo Rum. Another another great, yeah, another great jam out of Rum. Who would have um, Unique. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, and then just to wrap it up really quickly, uh, Echo was, was, a, was a, you know, a succinct version Really nice, really nice uh, transition into 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 the mist against mist. Which was the which the only thing I'm going to say about this is, thank God they finished this song this time. Yes, because people for a finished mist. They 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 played five. They played mist five times without finishing it. Uh, Which which as I said earlier is a it's a crime. And we deserve, I, you we know, des- it just, des- it just, yeah, it just shouldn't be. Able, I mean, look, we need to make our voices heard. I think, you know what I mean? I don't think there was enough uproar online each of the times that, that, that it wasn't finished, you know? Mm-hmm. So anyway, it's, so, so it's actually, so the last time they finished a mist was Kansas city last November, which by the way is, is an all time, just fire, Taylor, fire version. I mean, yeah. it's just so yeah. good, dude. It's, it's so good. Hey, would that be but, on so your no, spreadsheet? Uh, it is actually, yeah. Hey, so you know, here's the funny thing about this that we're talking about this right now. So, so in the back of my head, and Rick talked about the, you know, the the dude from Cleveland asking about auto tune, which you know, you know, is what it is. But in the back of my head, I'm always thinking, I hope they're not finishing Mist because, like, Rick doesn't want to do the auto tune ending because some clowns are talking shit about it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so, so anyway. Glad to have the ending back. Uh, Hopefully it stays. Always, always better with the ending. Always better with the ending. Um, and then, of course, Dripfield. Love it. They did the, like Asheville, they left the loop going. 
but then this time came back and and went right back into the jam. So goose I got I, I got to let goose, I got to wrap it up because I got to let goose out, dude. Goose the dog. <laughs> you got to let the goose, goose is out, loose. I don't know if he doesn't like what I'm saying or what. If he disagrees <laughs> about. I mean, I don't know. Goose Goose does not like the ending of Mist. I guess you know. Yeah, apparently. So yeah. so D D, what do you got on this set? Um, I thought a uh, great set, fun set on paper. Good Redbird, like you said, it's very positive, sort of major bass jam. My only um, sort of semi-complaint, I would say, it felt it got a little repetitive just in the nature, sort of just stayed maybe in those spaces, touched too long. Rum, though, you know, I want to talk about a critical thing. I, I sit here every time the song starts up, I admit, not very stoked, but each time lately for sure i I feel rum's done a good job and this was uh, kind of a unique little version mm -hmm. it it almost had i was listening to it earlier i was wondering if anybody heard it because it felt almost kind of it got like a flow down jammy like ben picked it up and peter was on some keys i think like and it sort of had this this mile i mean they enter these spaces but it just felt different it was cool it was cool um yeah and my one of my favorite parts of the weekend is that echo and echo into mist um and yeah just just like uh, we said i mentioned earlier i mean those are two songs together we've seen echo go 30 plus you know right multiple times this year and and, and obviously broken up at times or but two songs 12 minutes 13 minutes to 25 minutes total very efficient great spaces and uh yeah man like and then drip field personally that's sort of the song I'm most excited to see this summer. I've still not been able to catch it in the last few that I caught uh, after they had debuted it, but I'm sure it'll come. I think Red Rocks is going to be the one that's just going to be blow a it primal off. banger at the rocks. Mm, oh, hell yeah. So, yeah, anyone else? Set two, good set. One, probably my favorite set of the whole four, I would state, from the weekend as well. Personally. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's a really, really great set. You know, I echo what both of you have said about the Redbird. Um, Butter Rum, yeah, like super fast. Really in, you know, it's jamming more often than not now, which uh, is really cool. And I, you know, I like to see it take on more of that role instead of just being seven minutes every time. So that's cool. Um, and then Echo into Mist, you know, I think uh, with some of these segues, um, you know, the creatures into uh, or the arrow into creatures from last summer in Denver comes to mind where they're like all poised to just drop into the song and just like, and it's perfect. And they kind of stop and start the song, uh, the segue into, and they kind of did that echo into mist here, which diminished the value, I think a little bit, uh, but it's still a really great segue, you know, some great synth from Peter and the echo jam. Um, and then mist was rocking. This is the second time uh, they've done this recently. They did uh, echo into mist, same kind of, segue out of the jam um in cleveland in march uh and that was oh yeah that's right that was a great show um yeah and then drip field to close the set and show i mean yeah drip field is amazing i absolutely love this song uh love the jam that they get into you know once they pick it back up in the encore really great and i'm excited to see you know as the song continues to develop you know it's become this really great late second set you know i think it's it's either closed the second set or encored in all of its appearances so far if i remember correctly but i think it just it works really really well late show incredible vibe um but yeah i think best set of the uh best set of the weekend for sure kev what do you got five songs second set yeah man mm -hmm. uh can't say much more than y'all already have. The Butter Rum, 14 minutes, a little over 14 minutes there. I think we're talking about them being efficient or at least executing songs well. And I think the second set here is, is a pretty good example of that. Them not necessarily noodling for the sake of noodling, but just executing the songs well. I really enjoyed the second set. The Drip Field non-core into Drip Field was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, for me, like, being there, this set was like probably like the most like psychedelic set they did. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like th this whole entire weekend. And it, it was, you know, it, it was pretty awesome. Um, that Redbird was, was great. You know, I was standing next to like one of my high school buddies at this point. I had moved like up into the stands and uh, he's like a huge deadhead. And like that Redbird definitely grabbed a hold of him. And it grabbed a hold of me like that, the eyes of the world thing. 
like I think a bunch of people picked up on like right away. And then like Jive was saying, it, it went into that kind of pre um, cross-eyed and painless thing that like folks like to call the Reba jam. And that was, it was awesome. It was a cool, unique Redbird, and the lights during that, my memory of it is uh, were pretty incredible. Um, butter rum, like was, you know, it was a, it, that was a good butter rum. There's no other way to say it like that. that it was sometimes it was. that song can be like a total downer. Like they just come out and do it and you know, whatever. But um, this one was spectacular and I, I thought it was really great. Uh, the echo of a rose into the mist into, into the mist to belabor this thing that we're doing uh, <laughs> was, was pretty great. And it was like one of my favorite things of the whole entire weekend, if not my most favorite thing of the weekend. I think the crowd was really at this point, like completely drawn in. There were way more people in the venue at this point than there were like at any point uh, during the whole entire weekend. And uh, yeah, it was awesome. And I, I think it was like tweeting, like during it, like finish this mist, you cowards, you know, like all this stuff. And uh, yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, that was absolutely spectacular, but like you could feel that drip field coming through that whole entire second set. And once the mist started, that's when it got like really incredibly psychedelic, which like that, like it really excites me. Like when, when goose goes out there and kind of does these very, very psychedelic things. Um, because I think kind of the, the farther we get away from the grateful dead, the farther we get away from the idea that like psychedelia is, is the foundation of jam music, right. Or like the jam music that we know, jam bands that we know. And yeah, I just thought it was, it, it was incredible. And then, kind of that drip field drone jam, like kind of non-core thing into drip field They're, I mean, they're not out there like playing incredibly like exploratory improvisational jams when they're doing that. So, you know, like I think some people might say like, well, you know, like that didn't really knock my socks off, whatever. But if like you're there in the moment, it's an incredible performance. Um, and like, I, I think multiple minds were blown. It was my second time seeing drip field. And it, it it felt just as awesome as the first time I saw Dripfield. And I mean, that song is incredible live. I, I, I don't know how else to describe it. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's just like you kind of like feel the drums like in your body and, and um, not to be like an incredible fluffer because uh, I am. Uh, but this was special. It was like a really special moment in the weekend. And I think folks that walked out of that show, maybe who had never really seen Goose before, were like, this band's doing something that is truly different than what other bands are doing. And I agree with that. I, I, I think this, the, what they did with Dripfield on that night, like the, the drone jam in between, like kind of the Dripfield and the return to Dripfield was awesome. Like they weren't even on stage playing and it was awesome. Um, so I don't know. I had a hell of a time at this show. The second set, was was pretty great and you know we, we spent a lot of time talking about like jams and like which is the best jam and I, I don't think there's anything in this set that is going to rank anywhere in terms of like jams that you would rank but like if you're there at a show this one was special it was it was great indie groove psychedelia yeah man like and like the like, do the psychedelia thing please like uh more and more and more and like i think it's it's not just like peter like on the synth and it's not just Rick and it's not just Ben and it's not just Jeff and, and it's Her not buddy. just Trevor. They're all doing it. And I don't know. I, I, I thought it was, it was pretty spectacular. Sweet. Anyone else? Yeah. I just want to, you know, I, I think it's really interesting. Well, a lot of what Neil was saying there just about, you know, a lot of it sounds to me like kind of like, you know, there's, a, there's, a, you know, this emotional response and, and things like that, you know, and we talk about it a lot with, you know, why, why we love this band, the, that, you know, maybe we get a little bit more of an, we we have a little bit more of an emotional response through some of the songwriting and, and things like that. (laughs) I'm not trying to be funny. So, so I guess I get, when I think about this, I think like, you know, so something like that drip field, which, which is where I think, you know, you're making an interesting point, Neil, is do you think that people seeing Goose for the first time, you know, is everybody going to have the emotional response to that or, do you do you kind of build that emotional response as you, int- you know, as you become familiar with the music and things like that? You know what I mean? Like, and, and that's probably different for everybody, but but 
it's interesting to me, I guess, because I wonder, I, I get so much emotion out of, out of drip field, you know, like, kind of like you were describing. And I wonder, does everybody get that? Or, you know, do you have to build to that? Or, I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? About I think that? everybody has to feel that, like you feel those drums, you have to feel that at like a primal level, whether you're into the band, you're not into the band, like you're gonna feel like you're gonna have some just like innate bass reaction to those drums. I mean, that's, that's my feel. Sure. Sure. But then, like when when Rick sings the you know why I got to be such a sh- soldier all the time part, yeah. like you know may- maybe some of, you know so so yeah so maybe there's parts where yeah that's just there's there's primal energy maybe there's other parts like Rick's you know soldier you, you know that that bit that's for us where where yeah I mean, you know if you just if you really if you really like the guy you know and and, and you like his stuff and you and you've sat with it you know then I feel like that just it, it hits it hits even harder you know what i mean and i like i, I like, I like yeah. false subtle rick too so when he sings yeah. why you gotta be such a soldier it it it, so it makes it times. makes me madavan emotional <laughs> yeah. brings br- brings the bring, it brings it brings the madu tears, madu tears. <laughs> yeah. amazing amazing we got to this point kudos to you um i'll say this uh, like so to answer your question b so I was there with two people who saw their first Goose show. I was standing right beside them. And um, like right after the strip field, which was like the end of the show. So like, I mean, take a grain of salt with like, what I'm saying. Um, like I was, so I was there with like my high school buddy, like who I've seen like a million shows with. Like I was like Highgate dead with him in like 94. And, and <laughs> yeah, man, that's like flex. Hey, uh, so, uh, but like, just to give you like history, but like he turned to me and, and said, like, this was amazing. And I'm going to Radio City Music Hall with you. And so like, so I like, like, like I don't think there needs to be like a foundation there. Like I, I, I Dripfield is, is one of those tunes where like, like it's not going to hit you like a really incredible, let's say, uh, Wisteria jam. Like, I think it hits you differently. And I, I, you know, if you've heard maybe five drip fields, maybe it gets boring after a while. No, because it does. It does. Yeah. Happen. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, I'm like there, lost. there, there's no like heavy improvisation there. Right. Like every time they've done drip fields so far, it's like pretty much similar to the other versions, but like it, it, it hits you hard. And, and I don't think you need to listen to a ton of goose to be hit hard by this tune. It's an incredible song. No, that's, that, no, uh, that that's great. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I that, like I said, I mean, I, I, that doesn't surprise me. You know what I mean? This, it, w- so was this your, this was your high school buddy that you, yep. so you, you were talking about Redbird. Did you go to your high school buddy be- before Redbird started or like during Redbird? I left like during Empress. Oh, so your high school buddy saw you do the straight burden. <laughs> Video of yourself? Yeah, he was right next to me. Yeah, uh, so, he was right so next to me. What did he think of that? Is what I want to know. He probably thought I was a fucking a great idiot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think most people would, right? Like, it's it's one of the most like um, uh, vulnerable pos- uh, positions I'll ever put myself in. Maybe um, that's why you looked like a little nervous record. to me because you were doing that next year. I oh no, day. I was trying to get my brother to sing it, and he was like he flipping won't. me yeah, off. He won't. Yeah, he's, he won't. He's not um, into it. So he was to my right and my buddy was to my left. So like, if you watch the video, I'm like looking to my right, like saying to my brother, like you can do the Rick part. And he was just like, no, nah, fuck, fuck you. that. Bird. Uh, <laughs> so. Oh, I, that's, that's what you're saying. I was wondering what you were saying to him. Hey, tell Nate, yeah, we, hey, tell Nate, he doesn't get on the boat in Dylan. <laughs> if he has, if he hasn't done a straight bird, he's got a straight bird. Uh, hey, everybody, you, you know go. what? Right now we're decreeing this. Everybody, if you want to get on the jive boat in Dylan, there must be record. There must it. be record of a video. You got to sing like a bird. Jive boat. Yeah. Can you? Can you? Yeah. So, so yeah. So, so that, that's yeah. So that's yeah. Jesse, have, has Jesse done it? I haven't. I don't Jesse think so. The only thing I've seen Jesse do is extend his middle finger to the TV. Because uh, Jesse has gotten a boat invite. Maybe retract that. Yeah. Can be retracted. Like a, it, was a, it was a loose invite. It was. Oh. Uh, he was like one of those invites where it's like ah. Uh, you know, loose hey. ends invite. Make it conditional. 
This might be one of those situations where we want Jesse to not shut the fuck up. For the jive boat. I hear he's going to pay we'll extra to get it to stage. Yeah. Jive boat well, on it. Jive. We're hoping, yeah, we're hoping to get Peter on the boat. And then, and then we've got, yeah, do, just do some straight burden on the boat. I think it'd be fun. I think Peter would love that. <laughs> lots of, harm, lots of harmonies. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. Oh, shall we, shit. shall we talk about Boston calling? Oh, we should. Peter, Peter, do the Peter part. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, do the Jeff part. All right. Well, uh, last show of the weekend. Um, so we had uh, this was on um, Sunday, May 29th, uh, Boston Calling. So the festival, um, one set. So we have Born into Hunger Sight into Moby to open, followed by a Slow Ready with a brand new Good arrangement. Feel. We're excited to talk about that. Arcadia, White Lights, Silver Rising, and Hot Tea. Um, so yeah, you know, overall. Let's say another strong festival set. Um, got a pretty straightforward, traditional born to open. Probably gonna, you know, it's sort of it's the album version like we've seen. Uh, but a nice segue into into Hunger Sight. Um, so seeing that again, and then also this was the second time they've done the Hunger Sight into Moby. So that was kind of cool. They like that, obviously. And we were talking about emotion. Speaking of songs with emotional responses, even a three and a half minute Moby. That song like can capture new people, you know, even if you've never seen Damn this band. Right. So, um, Hell yeah. and then so, but probably the, the the coolest part of the set for me, T being very fun and different at the end for what it was, was this new slow ready. So, sort of started up. Um, we had Peter just basically out of nowhere with Rick on vocals and Peter, and then uh, kind of Jeff with a with a slow, and they had sort of like a repeating Tom. Um, sort of drum beat and um, yeah I really liked it personally so some people were even calling a little in your eyes so we basically had the whole song structure without the traditional um, arrangement that we know but then still hit the divided sky pause into the slow ready arpeggio jam and now Ryan would that have been on the new synth or was he still using he's still he's still using the, the, Nord, the, the Nord for that one that's uh, where the, the arpeggiator is yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I, but otherwise, I agree. It's amazing. S- standard through the middle. T was interesting. Yeah. Have at it boys. Yeah. Go I was going to say that, you know, I, I love opening the show with the born into hunger site using that transition that we hear on the album. You know, I think it's cool. And again, we continue to see born appear in different arrangements. I'm interested to see, you know, in its next appearance, what the structure looks like. Um, hunger site delivering a great jam yet again. Again, looking forward to seeing just like Dripfield looking f- and Born, really looking forward to seeing how these three new songs that are on the album evolve jam wise, at least over the course of the summer. With Dripfield ending the night before. Exactly. Too. Sort of another time they've done three in a row. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah. Moby killing, as it does always. Um, I really love the new Slow Ready arrangement. I think it sounds amazing. Yeah, you know, Peter on piano instead of synths right at the beginning, it kind of, instead of starting with that synth swell, you know, Spuds starts the drum beat and they go into the song the piano and you've still got some synthy stuff going on in the background. It was just really, really nice overall. And then still getting that traditional arpeggiator jam was great. And yeah, as you mentioned, you know, last four songs, just high energy goose, um, you know, showing different sides of the catalog. You've got Arcadia, you've got Peter song and white lights. You've got, of you know, silver there. rising, really showcasing those powerful lyrics and songwriting. And then you've got a quick T to close, you know, would I have rather an eight minute tumble? Maybe. Uh, hmm. Maybe. But yeah. I, I think, yeah, a seven, a seven and a half minute T works really well in this closer spot. Yeah, for sure. Um, for me, like the hunger site was the centerpiece of that show that had like actually like a pretty great jam in it. I, yep. I enjoyed the yep. hell out of that. Yep. Um, and, you know, Moby after that, like, you know, I guess if you want to hear Moby, just go see Goose play at festival yeah. set. <laughs> awesome. Like, play it everywhere. And, like, hey, you know, if Hunger Sight Moby becomes, like, a thing, like, like where they play Moby I'm with okay Hunger with Sight, it. like, <laughs> I love Hunger Sight even more. Um, and oh, yeah. uh, Slow Ready Arrangement, like, cool and different. I don't know if, I, like, I'm on the, the whole train of, like, this is the best slow ready that they've got, but like it's well, it was awesome. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm still team slow ready. It might yeah. be the best since um, 
Legend Valley, though. How about that? Oh, yeah. How about that? Yeah. yeah. And like Arcadia was good. And like that one should be in every festival set. Like they can play a compact Arcadia that sounds great. And this one sounded great. Everyone um, loves it too. Yep, yep. The, you know, hot tea in that show, that might be the hot tea that I want uh, more than the hot tea that closed the first set night one. It, it just, it's a rager. It, and like, you know, every every band should have like a rager tune. And like, it doesn't have to be 20 minutes. It's a hell of a well, song. let's just say it couldn't be 20 um, minutes because they ran out of time. Yes. Well, right. <laughs> and and like, I liked it the way that it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is what I was like, you know, referring to when I was talking about like hot tea. We were talking about the, you know, in, in Westville. Yeah, it, it this was spectacular. Um, and it, in terms of like how festival sets go, like, and you want to kind of, Talk about like what Goose should do when they do a festival set. I think this is it. I think this is the new gold standard of like Goose doing a festival set. Oh yeah, four twenty was yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Um, like four twenty was great, but like this, like I think yeah, you got a bunch of new stuff, like stuff that's going to be on the new album, plus tunes that like kind of like showcase Rick's voice, which I think is necessary. That this is an Arcadia, <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> like yeah. and an Arcadia, like. Yeah. And then like white lights, which is like a Peter tune. Like it, I think they they checked all the boxes, and like I think this is a great festival set. So yeah, I mean, I, you know, four twenty was forty minutes longer. So yep. so you know, I, I don't I don't know if there's one you know kind of out of the box template for a quote unquote festival set because you know sometimes you've got two sets, you know, like like at Suwanee. You know, sometimes yep. you've got a little over an hour, you know, and sometimes like at 420, you've got, you know, almost a two hour spot. So, so, so yeah, I, I mean, look, obviously I had, I had, I had no problems with, with how they handled uh, 420 or Boston Calling. I mean, I, I think, I think both of those, th- those are really good. And, you know, for as far as Boston Calling goes, yeah, I mean, the hunger site, that was what I was most psyched about. Just a ton of energy. Just, you know, I think Philly, had such a sick jam. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that version, you know, is my favorite kind of, you know, from, from me, from an improv perspective, I guess I'd say, but this one, Ooh, this is just fire. You know what I mean? It was just, just a real high, high energy version. Loved it. Born hunger site, Moby. Yeah. Talking about emotions. That's emotional. I almost thought I was almost surprised at how emotional that, that was for that crowd. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because you don't want to see yep. Metallica fans crying, you know what I mean. I don't want to see. Goose fans. I don't want to see Goose fans crying. To be honest with you, but, <laughs> but yeah, and and I, I dig this slow ready. I mean, and and sorry if if uh, if if somebody's already mentioned this, but yeah, I mean, I guess we're all assuming that that's kind of that kind of you know a take on the album version, and yep. um, so just continuing to look forward. You know, we're, we're I guess less than three weeks away now from that from that album dropping. So. Um, you know, really, really looking forward to to hearing the rest the rest of the songs um, that we haven't uh, gotten a peek at yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Short Arcadia, White Lights, Silver Rising. Yeah, you know, you talk about Moby being the the festival um, track, but Silver Rising has too. And yeah, love love seeing that. And if and if we want to interpret this as a like a vote of confidence from them in that song to, to play it in those spots, you know, which I don't know, maybe, maybe that, that's a, maybe that's a good way to interpret it. Maybe not, but I, I like it. You know what I mean? I, I, I like to think that that's one of those new, newer songs that, um, you know, that's not, that's not the rager of, you know, pancakes or, you know, the, the big jam, you know, with Redbird and all that, but, but yeah, that just like California magic. I mean, I just, I just love, I love Silver Rising so much as well, and and I love that they're, you know, that they haven't given it the Atlas Dogs treatment. You know what I mean? So, and then yeah, short T closer, boom, yeah, yeah, do it. We're fine with that. Let's go. And where, I want to quickly where, where is shout Atlas out. Dogs? I want I want to quickly shout out friend of the pod John Caruso, uh, who gave us a fantastic live stream of yep. the bulk of this. Set. Oh hell yeah, man! Thank you, Thanks, John. John. Big shout! Thank you. Make, John. Sure, Big make shout. sure you grab an El Goose Times um, at yep. shows this summer. I hear the guy that writes tour reviews is pretty cool. Mm. Well, I only wrote yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man! Uh, uh, but no, for real. Like um, what John's doing is great. Uh, yeah. Anyone else have anything to say on this Boston calling set? 
No, I had a good good festival set. I think overall now that's three uh, with Beale Street, which probably, you know, this was better, I, I think, for sure. But more so that I feel like they found a pretty successful blend already, which mm-hmm. is good, you know. So long may it continue, especially for one like Bonnaroo coming up, which is more of a late night. And hopefully we'll see a little bit more of an actual jammed out, you know, full on dance party festival style set. I'm still so, looking for yeah. that massive tumble into a massive Moby. It's my dream. Big creatures coming. Yeah. Big creatures too, coming sure. that night. Yeah. So before we wrap up the episode, I do want to, you know, take an opportunity to bring up a topic that I think we've been discussing a lot recently. And, you know, we mentioned earlier that Neil posted on Twitter about some songs that have abnormally large show gaps right now. And, you know, that kind of speaks to uh, their changing approach to writing set lists and keeping different songs in the rotation. And I know one that sticks out to me a lot as missing is Jive 2, which is currently on, I believe, a 12-show gap um, as of Thursday, yes, June 2nd. You know, this is a really, really long gap for the song, and I'm, I'm surprised that we haven't seen it since Nashville. I'm really hoping that it pops up again soon, uh, both for me wanting to hear the song and for my fantasy goose. Um, but also, you know, we've, we've mentioned Atlas Dogs a couple of times, which has also been missing since Nashville. You know, that's a song that we love. I think all five of us really love that song and I, I, I hope it comes back again. And, you know, there are a handful of other live staples that have been out of the rotation for uh, a little bit, which is interesting. We got no jives out of the three sh- shows that we just got done recovering and reviewing. That's true. No jives, no jives. Yeah, and, and that's surprising, right? And like, odd in Connecticut, I would think too, a little bit. Yeah how how yep. often the Will Tony and Jive. how often do we go three shows without a jive? Like, well, I think like probably reasonably often, but not more than no five, one, no two, you know? no three, no Lee. Right. Well, there is jive no three either. You know, <laughs> I'd like to hear <laughs> that. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, for me, like it's 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 Atlas Dogs, right? Like it, I, I hope that one comes back because it's a hell of a song. Yeah. And it's like a hell of a new song. And like, I wish they would play it more. You know, we heard like a really excellent version in Portland. Portland. Yep. Yeah. And like, you know, when I heard that Portland version, I was like, this tune is going to be like a really special song for them. And they played it at Goosebumps. And yes, they did. I think the Portland version, though, was like really kind of indicative of where that song can mm. go. Um, I mean, that was an absolute heater of a song. I mean, there's some that like you would expect there to be like huge gaps for, like, Doobie, like, you know, there's big gaps. I, mean, I think a 16 show gap for Doobie is like a really long time for them not Eurotian to play. Eurotian, too. Um, yeah, and like a 16 show gap for Eurotian, um, you know, but that was on the set list, right? So they were at least thinking about playing that yeah. one. I was expecting a Doobie in New Haven. I'm sure you got it. I really one. was. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> a couple. Uh, and. Uh, so yeah, and then Elizabeth fourteen fourteen shows like mm-hmm. Elizabeth Western is a, Sun a, also know. fourteen shows. We haven't seen either of those songs since Charlotte. Yeah. Well, so Western Sun I feel like has like gone into this category of like tunes that like I, they view as special and like maybe they don't want to play so often. And I think you know Elmeg sits in not the same category, but like a similar category in terms of like they're holding on to that one. Yeah, as far as the Western Sun goes, you know it was played last year. Only seven times. Right. Um, it's only been played three times this year. But before that seven, I mean, it, it, it had never been played more than five times. So, I mean, there's this limited data, uh, you know, available. But it, it's never been – I'm less – I guess I'm saying I'm less surprised with that one than, like, you know, the Jive 2 and, and some of the others. Um, just because right. it, it, it actually doesn't get played a ton. And shouldn't as much. I think it makes it special too. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, yeah. I, yeah I'm just. It, it's, it's the jive that's that's curious because you look at something like just for, you know, maybe a little bit closer to apples to apples. You had from last year, Hot T got twelve plays, and Jive Two and Jive Lee got twelve plays. Right. This year, Hot T's on eight and Jive Two's on four. So you know, for a song that was played the same amount of times last year, it's it's at a fifty percent clip right now. So that so that's pretty interesting to me. And then you also just look at some of the other songs that that haven't really you know seen a seen much of a decrease. And you know, everybody's gonna just have their favorite songs and whatever. But stuff something like Jive Two. I mean, that 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 seems like kind of a crowd like a crowd favorite. Mm-hmm. So 
Um, but you never know. I mean, you know, it just looks, I mean, somebody might get bored with something and, and they just want to, you know, they just want to leave it off. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, we're getting to the point where, you know, if, if they play electric Avenue more than jive too, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to write a letter. You know what I mean? Are you going to flip a table? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's real. Like, I mean, there are a bunch of songs that like, I think folks like hope they would play more often. Right. And I think jive Two. Well, I mean, they historically have played them, played that one more often. Like, I think Doc Brown used to get like a lot more plays. So it's like at an eleven sure, show gap yeah. at this point. Mm-hmm. Doc. Um, and like Dark Horse, like I think you know it came back after an incredibly long gap, right? And then I, I think we all thought it would be like kind of part of the catalog, and that's also at eleven Life back on the shelf. Yeah, like Western Sun is one I, I'd like to see come back like real soon, and like I wouldn't be shocked if you see it in either Vermont. Or at Art Park, or at um, the the two shows, the dual shows, um, as it were, at uh, Thornville. And, but, it, and it, then, like, you go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, you know, also Neil, we were just talking about that, uh, you know, because I did want to kind of tie it back to, um, you know, at least that New Haven, you know, night night two first set, as it kind of, you know, fits in here. And it's interesting when I think about Turn Clouds because um, eight plays is the, you know, is 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 the top right now. Yep. And there's a number of songs on eight plays for the year. All, all pretty much all the new songs: Silver Rising, Redbird, Pancakes, Rockdale's on eight, Hot Tea's on eight, um, Echoes on eight, Darkness is on eight, uh, Born's on eight. So so those songs are all in eight plays. Turn Clouds is on seven plays. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's just really interesting when you look at, you know, all the other songs, you know, on like, Jive 2 on four, you know, all these other songs that that, that are on lower plays. So, so that one's interesting to me. Turn Clouds is, seems to be, um, and that one surprised me even too. I, I, you know, if you would have said, is, is Turn Clouds, you know, up there at the top for, you know, songs played this year. I, I, I wouldn't, I probably would have said nah. Um, so anyway. Yeah. Great. You know, a lot of interesting gaps at the end of the day, there's so much new material over the last two years that something has to give, right? Yeah. It's going to create those natural. I mean, and we, we talk about some other songs that maybe get played a little too much. I think uh, not many on this list that, that you pointed out, Neil, of course, were some that I would say, but maybe so, you know, maybe like an Elizabeth or something. And that's one that doesn't need to show up. I think they could be shortened a little bit, but some others could probably be put on the shelf a little bit longer. Have a life on the shelf, maybe, you know. Uh, Boo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know who, who nope. said this. I, I forget who said this. And like, I uh, forgive me for not remembering. Um, I won't. But like somebody was saying that the festival sets kind of like ha- have interrupted like kind of some songs that kind of might have showed up more often. And I, I think there's some truth to that. You know, we've got three festival sets, right? Three? Yeah, yeah. three that have kind of come in here and like, they're going to go out there and obviously play like their more familiar tunes. So like, you know, if you see like a song like Western Sun Slip or like Elizabeth Slip, like that makes sense. But yeah, there's still some like really big ones out there though, right? Like, um, like Labyrinth is at 27 and Elmig's at 27. And like, that's huge. That's like a really, really long time to not play those songs. So it'll be interesting to see when those ones come out. Yeah. And I mean, Labyrinth's only been played once. Elmig's only been played once. You know, Loose Ends only been played once. What's going on, guys? Come on. Electric Avenue. Oh, three plays. Out in the streets, there is violence. And the thing is, loose ends. I mean, you can't play loose ends all the time. You know what I mean? Because it's 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 kind of uh, you know, like. And you'd say the same thing about Elmeg. You know what I mean? And, and and Factory. You know, I mean, all those are kind of songs where it's like, I mean, yeah. I mean, you get, it's good that they don't get played that often. I, I think we all want that. You know what I mean? We want them to be more rare. I, I think Electric Avenue should be more rare. Yep. Yeah, and you know, we haven't seen the way it is since the end of January. Would love to see that come back. Was that New Orleans? Um, no, New Orleans was in the fall. Uh, the way it is was played in LA in January. Are we doing mail sack? Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, oh, now that you we? mention it, 
We hmm. should do good. the mail sack. Yeah. Can, can I do a good thinking? Thing. Okay. Okay. I want to lead off. Can I lead off for mail Absolutely. sack? Absolutely. Oh hell yeah! So, in uh, wait, does that did you did someone email me the mail sack? I okay. don't think anybody did, but I'm just I have the tweet up right now, so I, I'm I'm just going to go off of that. The always almost there uh, mail sack invitational here, and our one of our very own Neil is is, is somebody that I want to address tonight who wrote. Uh, oh, yeah. That the AAT pod is not a safe space to <laughs> to, sh- oh, to share such feelings. Yeah, here we go. And, 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 and to be honest with you, I would like to address that directly in saying that it seems the AAT pod is much more of a safe space than the group chat. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fair. Uh, that's fair. That's, that's fair. fair. Anything goes in the group chat. It's true. Uh, you can be whoever you want. Goes. Okay. No. You can be whatever you like. <laughs> okay. And I Let's also, since there's a, a awkward pause here, Brendan, <laughs> who accused me of not being prepared last time, uh, as everybody <laughs> else is is scrambling uh, to find some material to talk about after this, I was indeed prepared this time. There you go. Okay. Well, speaking yeah, of shout out speaking Brandon. of Brendan, I will. Uh, he's got a, a nice contribution to the mail sack. Here was the seekers and homage to the greatest woman on earth. At Rebecca underscore Landor's proposal ended with a granted request of seekers. Coincidence? I doubt it. At Peter underscore Onspock knows what's up. Shout out to Brendan and Becca. This proposal. Shout out to Brendan and Becca who got engaged at the first night of Westville in 2021 with that seekers getting played again on the first night of Westville in the first set this year. Shout out to them. Yeah, Very lovely yeah, people. De- yeah, yeah, you know, and, and yeah, it's funny. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Brendan. It was already on my mind. I mean, heading into the weekend, I was, you know, I was, I was thinking about going big. I, I was thinking about going big on Fantasy Goose <laughs> because I've, of how, you know, kind of confident I felt. I mean, I was feeling those vibes still. You know what I mean? It's, it's the goat goose proposal. 100%. You know, uh, Spuds is right up there. I mean, he's right up there, but 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 this is the goat for sure. And we both, uh, B, uh, we both up at the Aggie back in December 2019, we saw a proposal there. Tied for third. Yeah, so I mean, this isn't yeah, even... All the others are tied for third. This isn't even our first proposal that we've seen at a goose show, so... No, nope, it's, it's, it's just such a beautiful moment. I mean, we talk a lot about crying at shows and, and, and things like that. <laughs> but yeah, th- this is... It's a beautiful moment. And I kind of felt like, yeah, I mean, it's like, it was like the anniversary of it. So, yeah, of course they played Seekers again. I mean, of course. Of course. It's my eight-pointer. All right. Yep. Who's up next? Uh, well, like, as as long as we're on the topic of Be Done, he asked us to rank the four Westville shows. Oh. And I, I've got rankings mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. God damn it, you're um, prepared. If you want me to start, well, this is, like, I'm putting it on the like, spot. This oh, I can do it. Off the cuff, I can give you something. Oh, yeah, yeah for on. sure. No, oh, go ahead, Jeff. You got it. Oh no, the I didn't floor want. Floor is yours. Okay, she no, well, I was just going to say, first. yeah, I didn't. Well, you I didn't. First. No, I didn't see this. I, I I didn't see that that tweet, so I hadn't looked at it. But I mean, I think for me it would be probably night two of this year, night one of this year, and then night two of last year, and then night one of last year. That'd be my order. Even like, though the proposal sure. was great, the show. Wasn't, I'm no, not ranking no. proposals though. See, that's the thing. I mean, I, I already, I, I just Dude, ranked proposals. We just got done ranking ready. proposals. <laughs> <laughs> what are we, chop? Uh, amazing. That's a tier um, two proposal, right? <laughs> okay. Huge gap. Yeah, I, I think what what floats June thirteenth of of uh, last year uh, is uh, the time to flee, which I think it was like a pretty. Yeah. Well, well, that was the flee. closest thing from either of the shows to making the jam of the year bracket last year. So, points for right. that. And then tribute to gold to start the show. Um, Goose should play tribute to gold more often. Agreed. Um, it was awesome. But I, I think these two shows um, from 2022 are are the better two shows out of the the four that have been played at Westville for sure. So I'll there jump in and rank them real quick. The top show for me is the one that. Uh, Rebecca and Brendan got engaged at and you know Ooh. to borrow from uh, and Chop. Rank. Huge gap the other three shows. <laughs> Next. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm going to go night two this year, night one this year, night two last year, night one last year. I'm, I'm in the exact same. Uh, what about 
All right, I got a good uh, nug sack. Oh, a nug sack to yeah. Adam. We, 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 yeah. we, were, we were talking a little bit about this uh, before recording, uh, whether we want to make this a whole new segment or just incorporate it into the mail sack. Let us know if you think nug sack should be yeah, a we regular have a lot, thing. We have a lot of mail sack submissions. So thank you to everybody who submitted. We will consider all sacks. So we have a comment from Reba, great Reba jam coming out of Redbird. and then certified hood classic writes what a great time the sun comes out the crew gets lit no bs the staff were all fantastic at the bowl every one of them the songs were all absolutely perfect quality news question mark rain sticks drip prize heater no cap y'all very very eloquently put I'm gonna say true. <laughs> yeah. D. Was that a nugs? That was a nugs. That was a nug sack. That nug was, sack. Okay, that so that was a nugs review for those out there <laughs> yep. wondering. AKA the nug sack. <laughs> thank you. Thank you to the nug sack. Um, remember to follow us on Twitter at AAT Goosepod for uh, nail sack contributions for Ooh. upcoming episodes. Oh wait. I got an even okay, better one. Okay, hit us with it. From Boston <laughs> Calling. All right. What's with the hate? I get Goose might not be everyone's thing. Why do people always complain about their style? If you don't like them, they're not for you. Move on. Do these folks go to Justin Bieber pages on YouTube and complain <laughs> about him? It's like people, I mean, I do. The, it's I mean, like I do. people the music wasn't made for you. Anywho, if you like Goose, this wasn't a bad set, other than a little short. And this is about Boston Calling now, pardon. By the way, I liked that slow ready. Reminded me of when Tool did Push It. Haven't heard Tool do Push It. Uh, But I like when bands evolve and play different versions of the same songs. Yes. Push it. But I agree. I mean, I think there's something to be said. It's We've noticed probably, right, as the band – and being serious, the band, you know, continues to grow um, and, and and gains a larger following. They're going to uh, attract more disdain as well in the process. And with uh, social media we have nowadays, especially Facebook and Twitter, it's just rampant. So, why are you going to yeah, be I mean, such a hater all the time? Exactly. No, <laughs> why are you going to be such a hater? Okay, I think a couple of mail sack. I, I want to get. I, 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 I definitely yeah. want to get through some more some more mail sacks here. Let's get a couple um, more in. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just do a quick, a couple quick true false ones. So Zach at Z W W W W W P is that too many W's? <laughs> I think it's like four. He said, three W's in a he said people for completing missed every time. Every yes. time. I mean, I, this is, I guess, it's not really true false. It's just I'm, I'm going to raise my yeah, hand. Yeah, like say, I, I think all five I'm of us those agree. people. Is he raising yeah. money? Because I'll send some. <laughs> with this, I, yeah, he, well, he said to send it to me, and then I'll get it. I'll make sure you're an right intermediary, people, so. and you'll yeah, okay. pretty much. You yeah, take I mean, like it's, point uh, two cents <laughs> in every transaction. <laughs> Someone's off, and then uh, okay, and then we had uh, we did have a uh, we did have a mail sack submission from a famous person, Josh Landis. Check mark at Josh Landis W A M C. He said, "Verified that Saturday drip field into drip field was one for the ages." True, I'm gonna say true. True, Wait, you're yeah, you're true. hitting all the points here. True, and I say and I say till the next one. Yeah, all right. Um, and just before we close out the mail sack, another uh, shout out to friend of the pod, Micah Atkind. Um, we are very proud of you for staying up for three full shows. Three full shows. For those of you who don't know, Micah is usually asleep at set break. Three full shows, and she tweeted one of the set lists. It's true. And 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 she called the song. Did, are there receipt tweets Are there <laughs> from late in the night? I mean, she texted the set list towards the end, so somebody theoretically could have taken her phone, but I, I, I think she made it. She's usually not ashamed about admitting when she falls asleep. So She's, she's good like that. Yeah, yeah. she's... Shout out Micah. All right. Well, another shout out to Micah. Well, I believe that brings us to the end of this episode. You know, I think we once again have found a way to talk for a really long time about a really small number of shows, and I'm very proud of us. We had we had other we had other important 
topics. Oh, everything is uh, important tonight. Well, we had so many shout time. outs. We had so many shout outs. I mean, maybe hopefully the next group run of shows will have more live streams that are official and we won't have to give so many shout outs. Mm-hmm. Well, shout out to Goose. And also, I mean, at, at the time of recording, today is Coach's birthday. So happy birthday, Coach. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. yeah, happy birthday, Coach. And yeah, if uh, if any of you out there are going to be at Art Park, please uh, come say hi. I will be there. I know uh, Meal will be in Vermont, Legend Valley in Indy, correct? Jive Goose loves yep. you. And, Legend Valley, let's and go. And D will be at Legend yep. Valley. As will D, um, but most of and, us, most of us and Indy. will be out in Red Rocks. Yes, and, but that's not, that's not in the upcoming week. Yeah, but we are going to do a special. We're going to do a special episode um, leading up to Dylan and Red Rocks. Um, Stay tuned for more information yeah, on that coming this summer. Yeah, yeah. Special shows deserve a special episode. Yes, but I was going to say I, I will be back in the car. I will be debuting the Straight Burdens uh, stickers that I have uh, at Art Park. Come find me, and I will give you one. How much are those? Mm. Those are free. Free fitty. Free fitty. Those are fuck out free of here. Fitty. <laughs> a crisp pie five will be accepted, um, but it is not mandatory. Chris pie five. Give Ryan yeah. a big hug. I would also accept hugs. So yeah, um, we hope to see flick you. It, some flick shows. him in the nuts. <laughs> okay. Do not do that, guys. Do All right, that. uh, that's going to bring us to the end of this episode of Always Almost There. Thank Jesus you, me. everybody, for listening. We hope you have a fantastic time. Uh, Enjoy these upcoming shows, and we will see you again very soon. See you later. Holla. Or we will see you on another time. Holla, holla. Good night.